right, guys. First lesson of calculus 2.1. We're starting with chapter two. So I'm going to go a little bit fast, but then not too fast, hopefully. Okay. Um, 2.1 rates of change just for a bit and then limits. That's our real focus. So do me a favor and highlight that. So after you write it, highlight it. Um, or you print this out, which is even better, right? Okay, what is an average rate of change? An average rate of change is slope. You learn that in like algebra one. So it's a slope using two points, y minus y over x minus x, right? What is an instantaneous rate of change? That is still slope. It's a rate of change, but it's a slope at one point. I want you guys to think about that roller coaster example I was talking about, okay? So that's a slope at one point. It's instantaneous. It's like changes all the time, okay? What's a limit? The limit is the y value. It is, I'm going to repeat this, basically the y value. So here's what I wrote. It's the y value description as f of x approaches from the left and the right side of an x value. So I'll explain it fully when we get to the picture and you'll see why this is the actual, you know, answer for limit, but basically it's the y value, okay? It's the y value that approaches on the left and right. Okay, there's two kinds of limits. There's a two-sided limit, which is a general limit. When we say limit, we mean a two-sided limit. And then there's a one-sided limit, which is very specific. A one-sided limit would be a right limit or a left limit. So when I say right limit and left limit, this would be a right limit, this would be a left limit. This does not mean negative one. This is a right limit. This is a two-sided limit. This is a two-sided limit. This is a two-sided limit. This is a what? Left limit. This is a two-sided limit. This is not a limit. This is a y value. Okay. So right here, this is important. This says for the limit as x approaches c of the function to exist. I need you to understand this terminology and be able to say it like that. Do not say lim x arrow, like that's craziness, okay? The limit as x approaches c of f of x. For the limit to exist, the left limit has to equal the right limit, aka the left and right have to be equal, okay? But that's how you write a left limit, that's how you write a right limit. Don't get confused, that is not a negative c, that is not a positive c, okay? So we're gonna show you little by little here. What is on the right side of the two? So at two, my y value is one, whether I am on, look what's happening to my pen, whether I'm on the right side, look how little it moved, or the left side. So that means that on the right side, I'm definitely at y equals one. So there's your one. <laughs> so the left side of one, okay, this one's good. The left side of one, if I were to cover up the one, I could see a right side and I could see a left side. So what is the left side of one? The left side of one, if I move my pen just to the left, the y equals zero. That's why the answer is zero. Okay, I want you to try these. I know some of you aren't going to, but you really should, okay? So I want you to think about what each one is. Go ahead and pause it and then check your answers, okay? So the right side, you unpaused, right? The right side of one is one. The left side was zero, the right side is one. What is the limit at one then? Well, that's a left limit, that's a right limit. The limit does not exist. Those are not the same thing. What about at three? The left limit at three is one, the right limit at three is one, so the limit is one. What about at four? Ooh, you got this right, right? I hope the left limit is three. We see it right here. The right limit is three, so the limit is three. What about six on the left side? Six on the left side, the y value is zero. What about six? Well. To know what six is, I need a left side and a right side. Is there a right side? No, there's no right side. The right limit would be does not exist, which means that the limit itself would be does not exist. What about f of four? f of four is the y value at four. It's one. Ask me a question if you have a question. 
ask me, you know, tomorrow or or in the comments or something. Okay. So finding limits algebraically. So basically, I mean, we can use this graph. We can graph everything. But think about how silly that would be for a line because you know now this is a line. Lines don't have holes. Lines don't have gaps. Lines don't have weird things going on. So if it's a line, then it's just a y value. So you just plug it in. So again, here, you just plug it in. I'm going to start blocking some. <laughs> and then you plug it in and you get 8 still, right? So this is still a line. And then this one, you plug it in and you get 0 over 4. Well, what's 0 divided by any number? It's 0. All right, this one's the good one. You plug it in and you get 0 over 0. 0 over 0 is not, does not exist. Do not write does not exist. Like you can't see my face, but I'm going crazy right now. So if you have 0 over 0, there is no answer until you keep going. What you have to do is you have to factor. So you factor any way you can. So factor the top, factor the bottom. I expect you to be able to do that relatively quickly. And then what happens is you get an x minus 2 on top and bottom. You divide it away. And now you can plug in the 2 and you get 1 fourth. Your final answer is 1 fourth. There is no way to get this without factoring. You cannot say it does not exist. You will be big fat wrong, okay? What does this mean, by the way, when you cross out the top and bottom like that? That is, you guys took pre-calc, that is a hole. So this is a function that has a hole in it. What we're doing is we're getting rid of the hole and then this is what's left over, okay? Um, again, remember how to factor. So here's your difference of squares, here's your difference of cubes and your sum of cubes. You have to remember how to do soap. So this is just a reminder. So soap, same sign, opposite sign, always positive. Same, opposite, always positive. What happens with the A's and B's? This is A, this is B, this is A squared, this is B squared, this is AB. Do not be crazy and put a number in front of the AB. Don't be crazy like that, okay? You're going to do it. Some of you are going to want to do it. Please don't do it. Okay. Um, this one, actually this one, I'm going to go like this. <laughs> Even though you guys already saw that. Um, okay. So greatest integer function. This is called the greatest integer function. This is also called the greatest integer function. It means the same thing. It's also called a round down function. There's another name for it. Do you remember? Do you remember? It's called a step function because it looks like steps. So what does it mean when you round down to the nearest integer? It means when you plug in, like if you want to get the greatest integer of a 2.5, you round down and your y value is 5. So if x is 2.5, your y value is, is sorry, your y value is 2. So 2.5 rounded down is 2. 2.7 rounded down is 2. So you just keep rounding down until you get to the next integer. So that's why right here you have 1 rounds down to 1. 1.1 rounds down to 1. You don't do 1.1 comma 1.1. It rounds down to 1. Everything rounds down to 1 until it goes to 2 because the x value turns into a 2, so the y value finally turns into a 2. And then it's a step until you get to the next one. That's why it's a step function. So it always looks like steps, okay? So really simple. How do you do this without a graph? You don't need a graph. I just wanted to show you what it looked like. So what's the left side of 2? It's like 1.9. Round that down, you get a 1. What's the right side of 2? Like 2.1. Round that down, you get a 2. What about at 2? What happens at 2, guys? What's the left limit? 1. What's the right limit? Two, are those the same thing? No, does not exist. Round that down, you get a zero. Round that down, you get a two. Round that down, 3.14, round it down, you get a three. Round down a negative 1.5. When you round down a negative 1.5, you get a negative two because you round down to the left, right? Smaller numbers are on the left. Okay, round down a negative three. That's negative three, right? No, it does not exist. Negative three is an integer. What happens at the integer? There's a step. So there is never a limit at an integer. The limit never exists at an integer because there's always gonna be that step at every integer, okay? All right, I'm back. Okay, so on the back, we're still doing limits. This is a piecewise function. You have to be able to draw this. If you need help, you got to come to me at some point, maybe the support period. Um, okay, 
So I like to number them so I know what's happening over here. I know like where to plug in my um, my function, my little pieces. I want to know which piece to plug into. The first piece, the second piece, or the third piece. So less than three equal to three, greater than three. So anything less than three, I use this, right? So this says three on the left side. Three on the left side is basically three, but on the left side, I have to use this because it's less than three. It's on the left of three. So then I plug my three into equation one or, you know, part one, and then I get negative two. That's my left limit. See, that's a left limit. What about my right limit at three? Well, this is on the right side of three. So I plug in the three, I get four. That's my right limit. Okay, what about at three? Well, those are not the same thing, so it does not exist, right? The left limit and the right limit are not the same thing. Okay, what about at one? What? There's no one. Yeah, there is. One's over here. One's less than three. So you plug in the one and you get a two. What about 10? Ten? 10's over here. It's bigger than three. You plug in the 10, you get 95. What about three? Well, it tells you it's four. Okay? Okay, there's some special rules. So there are, you have to memorize some things. You haven't actually memorized anything yet, by the way. Here are your special rules. Okay? So your special rules are saying, um, actually, I'm going to do this first. I'm going to go like this. So what we already know, we know that when we plug in, so a sine function, a sine function is like a, like a wave, right? Cosine function is like a wave, right? Um, so when we plug in, we should be able to plug in, what is the sine of zero? What is the y coordinate of zero um, degrees on the unit circle? It's zero, right? So like, you know, at zero degrees, you have one comma zero. So the y coordinate is zero. What is the cosine of zero? One. What is the tangent of zero? The tangent of zero is y over x. Zero over one is zero. We know these, okay? What we don't know are these. So here's the issue. If you were to plug a zero in this, you would get a zero. And then on the bottom, you would do zero times anything, which is zero. So the box and the triangle just represent like numbers or whatever, okay? So what happens if you get zero over zero? Well, zero over zero isn't an answer and you can't factor this. There's no way to factor this. So your special rule is saying that what you do is you take the number over the number. So you just take the ratio of the numbers and that's gonna be your answer. So if this is sine of x over x, it would be one over one, which is one. Okay, same thing if you flip it, same thing with tangents. So right here, tangent, if we have tangent of zero is zero and then zero on the bottom. So zero over zero doesn't work, but we can go ahead and use our ratios. It does not work for cosine because cosine would be one over zero. So that's no good. It does not work for cosine. Instead, this gives you zero over zero. So one minus, you plug it in, you get one. One minus one is zero. Over, if you plug in, you get zero. Zero over zero is no good, but this special rule tells you that you're gonna get a zero, okay? So we can look on our calculators actually and see that this is true. So you can type anything like this into your calculator. You can look at the function, you can look at the graph actually, and you'll see that at zero, it like crosses y equals zero. So zero, zero is a point, okay? So use the special rules to find the answers for these. This one should be pretty simple. Four over six, reduce, you get your answer. What about for this? Well, cosine, pi, and then here's a pi. Well, actually, this is still a special rule, right? So instead of that box and a box, it's just pi and pi. So the answer is zero. What about this? Okay, so here's the thing. I want you to realize you're still using a special rule. So what you can do here is you can actually write out sine of 16x up here, sine of 8x down here, and make this an x and make this an x, because what happens when you multiply in x over x? You're multiplying in a one. What happens when you multiply a one? Nothing, nothing terrible happens. So this way, that's a special rule, and that's a special rule, and now you have one times, well, you have 16 times one over eight, and then you have two. Okay, so you're still using special rules here. What about this one over here? Well, that's a special rule because you can factor out a one half. 
because if you factor out a one half this becomes a two and a two and then that's a special rule that gives you one or sorry zero and then zero times one half is zero I will be impressed with you if you get this one right and you pause <laughs> get it right okay and then you unpaused all right you can write it out correct Okay, sorry. So you can write it out and then you get that, right? Because this is a special rule and this is a special rule. So instead of squared and squared, I wrote it twice. But remember that one half only goes with one of the x's. So then now I have this. I multiply, or actually I divided my fraction and then I multiplied the final answer. Okay? All right, come to that... Um, Student support if you have questions about that. I know that was a lot. I know, I know. So I'm going to try my best to make your homework um, short and sweet, okay? As short and sweet as I can get today's. All right, good luck.